Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fine Tuning the Kayak Roll with Natalie Kramer Anderson. My name is Melissa DeMarie, and I will be your host for the show today. This is webinar number, gosh, 16? Holy moly. I'm considering that we normally teach on the water, and we have completely reshifted during this whole COVID thing to uh, teaching online. It's um, it's it's been fun it's been a really fun learning experience and it's been fun starting out these zoom meetings um my wi-fi today is utterly terrible and so i have this really interesting system set up in my house right now so hopefully i will be with you during the duration of this webinar um i am the founder of california water sport collective or Kelly collective for short we are a community building organization where we use kayaking and other paddle sports as our medium to get people together, get on the water. We offer classes, trips, and other fun excursions throughout Northern California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Chile. Um, hopefully in the future we will some other fun destinations. So um, stay posted and get on our website because we are going to be able to start running classes soon. Woo! -hoo! Um, but uh, anyways, uh, without further ado, I'd love to pass the mic over to Natalie. Natalie, before you get started, maybe you could, um, for those of you that don't know you as well as I do, um, just give us a little bit of your background, your paddling history. Um, I know it's quite long and you grew up in a paddling family, but um, yeah, go ahead and tell us, tell us all about you and then you can roll right into rolling. Um, great. Thanks, Melissa. Um, I'm just going to assume everyone can see me just fine and hear me. Um, so I learned to kayak about 16 years ago. I, um, before that, I grew up river rafting. So I, I learned to kayak when I was in college and I started going to pool sessions. And um, I, I now boat at a, a fairly high level, but I have spent a lot of time also um, working with a lot of different people on their roles. And I think more importantly, I end up spending time helping people fix um, bad habits in their roles, which has sort of given me, throughout the years, I've put a lot of thought into the underlying mechanics of why a head is coming up exactly, because it can actually be an underlying reason um, it's not just like head down, you know, there's, there's other underlying mechanics that forces the heads up, head up. But my own pro rolling progression, I'd say, um, I learned to roll in college. I wasn't, I didn't learn to roll like quickly. I wasn't one of those people that like got it their first time. It took me about five times going to the pool and it took, I finally got it when I switched instructors and had a new perspective and I switched boats. Um, when I spent my first year kayaking, I pretty much just went to the pool twice a week. So by the time I got on the river, I was really confident in all my roles, like my hand rolls, my back deck rolls, my onside, my offside, which is, I think, kind of rare for people's progression when you're starting kayak. So as a result, I was really confident beginner. I um, progressed really quickly through class three and four. Um, but I would say there was a moment about two years in, um, and this happens to a surprising number of people, two years in after paddling, I lost my role. It had to do with a, kind of a cold water um, incident when I was play boating. Uh, it got like kind of a little hypothermic. And um, I had a kind of a bad role and it really brought into focus how much that role and my confidence in my role made me have fun on the water and gave me confidence to progress because all of a sudden I was paddling this run that I had tons of fun with the year before and I went and I paddled and I was like petrified the whole time I couldn't wait for the run to be done and it's a run that I used to surf on and have tons of fun and so I kind of went back to the drawing board and really worked on my role in the pool to diagnose uh, what was going on at that point. I've had now two kids and I would say um, postpartum, the role, it definitely becomes less good <laughs> just because you've lost a lot of uh, different um, muscle strengths that you're not used to having. And so that was a completely different diagnosis where I've, I had a good, excellent role, but then all of a sudden postpartum, I'm like, 
on my, you know, I'm like beatering my rolls. I'm taking me two or three times to roll and, and kind of putting some thought into why that was happening. And I will get a little bit more into some of the, you know, what can happen in a role during the talk. Um, but I, I do, so that's why one of the reasons I'm super excited actually to give this webinar um, because I, it's something that's been really kind of important to me. And then I, I saw someone mention shoulder pain. Yeah, there's some times when you're, when you're, Mechanics are a little off on your roll. Your shoulder starts to hurt. It's a good sign to go back to the drawing board and um, figure out uh, how to how to keep your roll um, fast and safe and easy and not painful on any part of your body. So um, let's see. Um, so I did gear this talk to assuming that, and it looks like I I got it right. Um, most people kind of already have a basic understanding of the kayak roll. If it's your first time ever seeing anything about the kayak roll, there's going to be stuff in there that may be a little bit too much information. Right now, it'll be a lot of information, but you can kind of um, keep it in the back of your mind as a resource to come back to as you're working through your roll. Um, I'm going to largely focus not on a lot of the uh, like back decks and, and hand rolls. I'm going to focus on a kind of a basic um, sweep or C to C. Actually, a lot of the mechanics in them are, are fairly similar. So it should apply to whether you're doing either of those roles. Um, also, the, a lot of the tips that I'm going to give throughout this webinar can probably be, uh, can actually be applied to and make your other roles better. So your hand rolls or your back deck rolls or, you know, whatever other role you want to kind of pursue. Um, what? Can I watch? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can watch. <laughs> um, this is my brother, everyone. His name is Russell. You can walk in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my um, screen here. Um, give me a moment to get that set up. Share. Um, can that, can everyone, let's see, um, trying to find the, actually, I, i lost the, um, can, uh, Melissa, can you give me a verbal if you can, sh uh, actually see my, my, uh, screen that says set up, sweep, hips, that finish? Yes, that says okay. that. Okay, great, because I, I, lost where the zoom navigation thing is so, um so here we go um this is like sort of the basic four components of the role that you hopefully were introduced to and this sort of the order that you you do them in and i as an overarching idea just to keep in mind when you're troubleshooting your role um and when you have and you're thinking about your own role um you don't have to do all of these things perfectly. Often, if you have a really good hip snap, you can get away with a lot of bad habits in your setup and your sweep. Um, or you have a really good finish, you can kind of get away with a less good hip snap. And, and so one thing to keep in mind is maybe when you learned, pretend, potentially your hip snap was a lot better, and then over the time, maybe you haven't been rolling a lot, so you're losing some muscle there um your so, so the bad habits it's less forgiving with some of the bad habits in the other part so if you have had a role and you lost it it might be because um you might need to focus on getting a little bit more solid or better techniques in other parts of of your role um and i want to also generally when i'm working with people troubleshooting the role um, there's a few things that you can do and think about that will help with any of these uh four steps and should really help a lot and uh this is just some overarching things to think about and one and the, i'd say my number one reason why you know you're in a cold especially when you're in cold water or white water why it's a lot harder to roll than like in the pool and the warm water is often you're a lot more gripped and less relaxed and it's really important to try to keep your hands loose and trying to stay relaxed throughout the roll. Um, that's that's a very important kind of overarching point. Um, 
the other thing I usually emphasize with people, a lot of times when you're rolling, we're hyper focused on what our arms and our hands and our paddles are doing, often to the detriment of the roll. Um, in if you can take your focus away from your arms, your hands, and your paddle, and put your focus, your attention on what your hip snap, your your knee, and your body and your core is doing, um, then often that fixes a lot of a lot of problems. So as you're working on your own roll in a pool. Um, you can really start to target changing that focus of your attention. So this is true for any kayaking and especially true for the role, um, being able to um, really separate out that upper body movement from your lower body movement. Um, when you're rolling and you're driving on your hip snap with your knee, you're, you're sort of activating all of these leg muscles, but at the same time, you need to keep your upper body loose and relaxed. So it's, um, it, it, you don't want to be driving that roll with your knee and then everything else, your upper body be tense. And that's going to make it really hard to roll up smoothly. Uh, and the last one is, and I touched on this a little bit with the postpartum stuff, but you, it's really helpful to build. Um, some of that core strength and flexibility might be the main issue for you rather than any specific mechanics. And um, that's happened when postpartum, I, I realized that my hip snap was slower than I was used to. So my whole body mechanics was going at my normal speed, but my hip snap was slower. So the timing between my hip snap and my sweep wasn't correct anymore. I could have just slowed, de slowed down my sweep to match my new um hip snap uh my new slower um hip snap um and and you know this kind of depends on your your body some bodies just are are really inflexible um and you can still have a good role it just means that you're gonna have to have better mechanics and potentially your hip snap it's gonna be hard for you to really set up really high and it just means you're probably going to need to focus a little harder on having good hip snap and a good finish. It might be harder to get that sweep as far out of the water. Um, and then you can start with doing a little stretching um, to, to gain that flexibility. So those are sort of like, I don't know, these overarching themes. Now I'm going to go into each of these, a setup, a sweep, a hip snap, and a finish. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, I think, the main things that I, I think are the key things to do well in each. Um, and I'm going to finish this talk with a video that I'm actually kind of proud. It was kind of fun to do um, where I do a good roll. I've got some stuff in slow-mo, but I also then think about doing one error. So I, I separate it out and only doing one thing wrong in each roll. And you guys can see how that played out to the rest of the roll. So that's what we'll um, kind of finish with. So the first thing is um, on your setup, uh, you wanna make sure your paddle angle is set correctly so that the forward blade is flat. And one thing I'm showing in this top photo is you, you start with your knuckles aligned with your blade and that's just how you should be holding a paddle when, when you're paddling anyway. So your right hand, you can align your top knuckles with the top of the blade. And then the trick is when you curl over to the side, to um, hopefully you guys can see me, you, you cock your wrist for a little bit forward like this, and that should flatten your blade. Now it will depend a little bit at uh, different people have different, um, well, I mean, that should actually work for any anyone um, because you're sort of setting your knuckles with that front front blade. What it gets challenging in is when you're starting to work on your offside, um, it, that might, if you're having trouble with your offside, it might be because your blade angle on your offside, because you have like maybe a high degree offset on your paddle, like a 45 degree offset of paddle. The more offset you have on your blades on your paddle, the harder or the more weird that offside is going to be because when you're on your normal setup, it's that blade isn't going to be flat. So um, you can kind of practice this and look at it if you put some goggles on or you have someone hold you, um, hold your boat, you can kind of play around with caulking your wrist different different levels to see, making sure that that front blade is, is flat. Um, the other thing is, um, this is something that I do with a lot of people who are gripped. And um, I really highly recommend this, especially if you're struggling with role, maybe in more high stress situations. 
Um, before you start your sweep, be calm and set up and wiggle your fingers like like this. Make sure that you don't have tension, that you're gripping, if you're gripping your paddle really tight, what happens is it, it goes through your whole arm and it actually tenses all the way up through your shoulders and into your neck. And so if you grip your paddle really tight, it's really hard not to keep your head down throughout your roll. Um, and it's, it's actually just really hard to have a good roll and stay and relax. So take a moment before you begin your sweep and just wiggle your fingers, make sure they're loose. And that will usually save you carping a roll and falling back over. You might be more taking a little extra time before you start to make sure you're relaxed. Another one here, your arm should make a box draped around the side and not reaching forward. I see sometimes people learn and they're sort of like, I, I'm gonna show this a little bit better actually in the next um, slide. So I, I'm gonna uh, show some pictures a, a little bit more. So I'll, I'll go more on that next. Um, and some people talk about kind of having a hard time getting their paddle all the way out of the water. Um, and a lot of that is you wanna, reach around the side of the boat for the surface with your whole body and your head rather than your just your arms. So when you reach around for the setup, if you're just reaching for your arms, you're not actually going to get very high out of the water versus if you take a, a C position in your side and you really reach over the side and then like this, you're going to have a, a lot higher in the water. And it's something when you're first starting to learn kind of hard to see because <laughs> when you're practicing setups upright, as soon as you get in that position, you're gonna flip over. So it's sort of hard to show someone when you're actually teaching them in the pool. Um, but I think these next um, photos sort of illustrate this. So I'm gonna call this a for this one on the fur furthest over, I call it like a forward setup. And a lot of people will do this setup where you're kind of tucking your head towards your knee, but you do notice how my paddle, when you do that, it's really easy to have your paddle be um, at an angle so your top blade will be high and your lower blade will be low. You can still do a, a decent roll from here, but it'll be a lot harder not to have that paddle go all the way under the water. Um, it'll be a little, you'll have to have like a better finish and some other things. So you can, a lot of things can fix if you just pull your, your head in and to the side and see this front hand is no longer straight. You just bend that front elbow and drape it over the side. And then if you really tuck around the side, I call, I'm calling this one a low setup because this is one where I'm maybe not so inflexible and I'm just sort of um, kind of changed my body position from that arm being forward to the side. And you can see how my arms aren't that high out of the water. They're just, um, just right at the surface or some people might be just under the surface, but at least my blade is flat and I have this nice um, flat blade. So the last one, which I don't know, I always shoot for this more ideal setup. It's the higher you you can get your blade out of the water around your boat, the usually the easier and faster your your roll is going to be, and the less strain on on your body. So um, you achieve this by really stretching the side and really reaching around your boat with your whole body and your head. You can see that my hands, my elbow is actually bent. So I'm not straightening my arms. And a lot of people, um, if you're having shoulder issues, it's usually because your arm is straight in part of your roll and it puts a lot of can put a lot of strain on your shoulder. So if you can keep things tighter, that will really help a lot. Um, the sweep stroke um, is the next um, like, part of the roll. Um, and again, I'd say focus on that sweeping motion. So you're, you're tucked forward. Now focus on untucking with your body rather than untuck, like other other than reaching up and around with your hand. So you're going to drive that sweeping motion with your body and your hand is just going to follow. So in this picture, I, you can kind of see that my, my wrist is loose and my fingers are loose. So you should have a very loose grip on your paddle when you're doing the sweep. You're not clenching your paddle and pulling on the sweep. You're actually unfolding your body and your, and your wrist and your hand are just following that motion. Um, and again, keep, keep, keeping loose. 
I try to maintain a, a box with my hands throughout the sweep and it's sort of hard to demonstrate in photos and um, but here, but you can play around with that. When I, when I do a setup, I'm in a box, I'm, I'm over to the side, I'm setting up, but then also play around with how you can do a sweep, sort of trying to keep that box the whole time. Importantly for your shoulders, the more you can keep your elbows tucked towards your sides and in or down during your sweep and your entire roll, the more you can keep those elbows bent and in and tight, the less your shoulder is going to hurt. I know a lot of people have hurt their shoulder and what they did was they tied like a, a string from their, <laughs> they paddle with a little string from their elbow to their life jacket a little bit to correct to make sure that while they're paddling, they're never lifting their elbow up. And you can even do that with a roll. Um, it can be helpful to get a smaller, shorter paddle with small blades um, and keeping that sweeping motion really tight to the boat. Um, I think that might, you might be able to see that better in some of the, the videos at the end of the talk. Um, this one is really, um, I think, um, can help you with a, a lot of issues is if you really, so in this picture up here, you see my side right here. It's really hard to show this when you're upright because it's something that happens underwater. But if you can really have a good stretch in this side and a, it's almost like you can hold a pencil in the other side that you can't see on this photo. And if you can actually maintain that position throughout the sweep, a lot of people will let that kind of kind of relax um, that side stretch. So if you can sweep, kind of keeping that side stretch the whole sweep, that's what's going to keep your paddle at the surface of the water. That's what's going to keep your paddle up near the top rather than it kind of sinking during the whole sweep. So the more you can reach the surface and be reaching for the surface with your body and your head for the entire sweep, the, the easier um, the roll is often going to be. Um, so at some point in your sweep, you'll be doing a hip snap. And um, a hip snap is something that, you know, you, you really drive your hip snap by pulling up on your knee hard against your, your thigh brace. And the, the harder you yank up on that thigh brace, the snappier and faster your hip snap. The, also, the timing of everything has to be faster um, as, as well. Um, and if you have really loose outfitting, so um, where you're pulling on your knee, but it's not making contact with your thigh brace right away, your hip snap's gonna be a lot weaker. Um, if you can get, because the most powerful part is at the right at the beginning when you start pulling. So if you can tighten up so that your knee is making really tight, uh, like instant contact with your thigh braces, the hip snap is just going to be a lot more powerful for you. Um, this one is slightly different for everyone, but you're going to want to make sure your hip snap is timed correctly with your with your body position. And I'm going to have a, a video that shows us a little bit better. Um, but when you're in the pool, you can play around with this and you can be on somebody else's boat and you can kind of like rock forward, tuck forward and tuck back and try hip snaps at like different spots along that whole sweeping motion. And there'll be one spot that is like way easier than the rest spot. So you'll understand if you're trying to hip snap when your body's too far forward, it's hard. And if you're trying to hip snap when your body's too far back, it's hard. You can, there's a sweet spot right around when your body's perpendicular to the boat where it's, it's easiest to engage those knees and get the boat rolling on this axis. So you kind of want to play around with that. Um, this is, in, so a lot of people like, uh, when you first start your hip snap, there is a little bit of opposing tension between your knees and maybe your hands. Um, but the more you can not have that opposing tension and just drive it from the knee, or the more you can, if you have that like kind of opposing motion, it's almost like, um, you know, it's, it's where my hand is touching you know, Haley's boat there, um, which kind of helps you get stabilized to initiate. But the trick is to, as soon as you, the boat starts that rolling motion, you need to disengage your tension in your, 
any tension in your arms and your hands and relax. So it's really only for a split second that you might have a little bit of tension in your arms during the roll and that's right at the beginning of the hip snap, but only then. Um, here's something that I found is quite effective for a lot of people. Um, your head, when you roll, it's easier if it kind of has somewhere to go. So you, it, it's hard to start with your head down and keep your head down for the entire roll. That's, that's actually very, very difficult to do. So it's easiest if you can reach for the surface with your head, with everything you've got, with your body, with your head. And then as soon as you do your hip snap, you relax and your head drops to the opposite shoulder. And so that's what I'm showing here. It's starting up, starting looking up, and then it's ending looking down towards your hand or to your back of your boat. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, let's see, I have a video. I'm gonna show just a couple little um, hip snap things. I actually, I have a better, version of this, sorry, um, on my computer. Uh, let me just pull it up. The one I put on YouTube was a little bit poor quality, so I'm gonna show. I hope this is good quality. Also, maybe. Um, Melissa just reminded, so, you're doing a great job, Haley. To, one second, guys. I'm trying to find my mouse. Just pause this. Ah, where is my mouse? Oh, Hold there on, Davis. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Melissa reminded me that I need to, when I share my screen, I probably need to optimize it for video. So if it was maybe. Okay, I think I did. We're gonna start this video over. Apologize, let's see, okay, I'm starting. So this is a routine that a lot of people do in the pool, and this is just me showing that I'm not trying to get my body over butt coat. You can just practice driving with your, with your knee. And there's that point we can play, you can play around with your head position. There's me looking up and letting it drop. To that opposite shoulder and so this is kind of a neat thing you can try what i'm doing here is i'm not actually doing anything with my knee in these exercises all i'm doing is dropping my head and you'll hey, be amazed Adam, we yeah. can't see the video right now oh, you can't no it's it says it started screen sharing but it's just just give it a second to load for some reason and if you turn the video sound off it'll load better Oh, I thought I had it off. Let's see. I didn't put, let me, let me just on. start it. Oh. Okay, can you let me know when it is good? Were you guys hearing the sound? I thought I had... Yeah, we could hear the sound. It's um, It's still loading, so just give it a second. Wait. Let me just make sure this share computer screen. I, I don't have that clicked. Okay. All right. Um, can you get, let me know verbally when it, can you see it? I will. Okay. You're on. Okay. So I'll just <laughs> last try with this video. Here we go. Um, can you hear the sound? I assume yep, I not. Can. You can? Well, just those first few exercises, I'm just gonna go with it. Those first few exercises that you guys have seen, I, I wasn't trying to come with my body over the boat, I'm just pulling up on my knee and seeing how that rotates the boat over. And these next exercises here, I'm just playing around with looking up and then dropping and relaxing and looking down. And these exercises here, I'm just playing around. I'm not do, actually doing anything with my knees. I'm just dropping my head. And it's pretty amazing if you put your boat on edge and then you try that little exercise, that the boat will drop. In this little exercise, I'm just playing around with imitating a sweep. And you can also put your 
left arm around the boat as if it was holding a paddle. But you can kind of imitate a sweep and you can play around with, start playing around with where it's easiest to drive that hip snap from. And here's me showing trying to do hip snap too early. It's actually really hard. And here's me trying to hip snap a little bit too late. And so you can kind of play around with those aspects of the, of the hip snap as you work on. And the last one, of course, is stiff arms. You can see kind of what happens. It's really hard to get your body back over the boat if you retain stiff arms towards the end of your, your hip snap. So let me just pull up. Next slide. Um, Melissa, can you give me a verbal on whether you're seeing my slides again? Yep, you're back on okay. slides. Cool. Um, the last part of that roll is the finish. And often, if you can have a really bad roll in a lot of the other areas, and if you have a good finish, you can save a really bad roll and you'll just come up right, it'll be okay. So um, this is part of the role that took me the longest to figure out how to teach, and it's, I think, often very difficult, but the, the goal is to come up over the top of your boat. Um, some people will teach leaning back at the end of the role um, to get your body back over the boat. I don't recommend, if you have learned that way, I would recommend trying to work on your mechanics so that you come straight over the boat um, because if you come up on your back deck you're often very unstable in white water and uh, you'll like immediately flip back over and you can get very tired rolling that way you can also put your shoulders sometimes at a, a funky angle as you're trying to like brace and pull your body back over the top of your boat um i need to plug my computer this um, the, the, another, um, big thing is that back hand, you can see my right, my left hand, my high hand there. If at the end of the roll, you can remember to bend your elbow in towards you and cock your wrist back towards your face. What that will do is it'll release any tension in your arms often, and it will also fix a blade angle on your paddle and keep it so that the, the paddle will rise to the top of the surface near the end of your roll if it's pretty deep in the water. So that backhand finish is really important. Um, and then if you can finish looking down your blade, um, you know, you can think about putting your ear to the shoulder. I like to tell people just look down your blade towards your stern. I feel like that's a little bit easier to do than just like hugging your head, to your ear to your shoulder. Um, you can kind of finish just looking down and back. Um, keeping your elbows at the finish. You see how my elbows are both tucked in towards my side will help um, your shoulder and um, release any tension in your body and try as much as you can to relax. And as I said before, this good finish can really save your role for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up one second. Um, the video that's actually on my computer rather than the online version because it's better quality. And then I'll, Melissa, when I have it up, if I can get a verbal from you when it's, um, one second, I don't have it up yet. I just, that's weird. Um, Melissa, can you see my video? Yep, you're on. And I don't know why the sound is on because I, I have it turned. I said don't share my um, thing, you know, my audio, but I apologize if it's loud. That's all good. Uh, that's, I'll just go with it. Um, so this is like my favorite video, I think. <laughs> Um, so I'm just gonna say this is my target role. Everyone is gonna be look a slightly different on your target role, uh, just your body and everything. But this is what I'm aiming for is ease and quickness, nothing hurts. 
Um, and so this is what will kind of go. And then I'm going to go through here, uh, just showing it in slow mo. You can see how I keep my elbows into my side and then kind of have a nice finish. Here we have a low setup, so a similar roll, but you have a low setup that's just fine. It's a really nice, nice roll. Here we have, I just, uh, let's scoot back just a little bit. If you guys notice this blade angle right here, it's not flat. So when I did this roll, all I was thinking about was, okay, make sure I have a bad blade angle and see what else happens. So holding everything else constant in my roll, I was only messing up my blade angle. So this is what happens here. You can still come up, but you notice how often, if you have a low blade angle, you end up with this arm punching out and this arm really far deep in the water. Here's one where all I was thinking about was having super gripped hands. That's all I was doing and trying to do everything else the same. You can see that resistance that I'm giving myself. It's really hard to roll up with that gripped hands. Here's one a lot of people will do. I'm gonna have you everyone notice this front blade. Instead of sweeping out to the side here, I'm gonna be pulling it straight down. So I'm pulling down with my front blade rather than sweeping. And that's kind of what happens to your roll when you when you do that. This one here, um, I talked about leading with my, my body and not my hand. You'll notice this front hand, instead of untucking my body for the sweep, I am focusing only on doing the sweep with this hand and this blade. <laughs> and okay, so this one here, an outstretched arm. I, I had this issue with the outstretched arm when I started losing my roll. I started paying a lot of attention my first time. I started paying a lot of attention to this, trying to like really pay attention to where this blade is. And I would try to really sweep it out far from my boat. Um, and it it's less effective actually than keeping that blade close to your boat. So if you are sweeping far from your boat, what happens is it pulls this top hand, this top hand kind of high and over your head. Um, so that might be happening, hurting uh, some shoulders there. On this roll, I'm calling it punching out. If you guys can focus on this back hand right here, um, this back hand isn't gonna, you, ideally this hand doesn't really move much in a roll, it's gonna stay right here. But in this roll, I'm gonna work on like punching this, this hand through and it's gonna look a little bit like that. And that hand is really straight. So I'm gonna do here a really good roll. I'm gonna keep my, I'm, I'm focusing mainly on keeping my elbows really tight to my, tight into my chest. And you watch, watch the hands. My main focus there was keeping those elbows in. This roll here is what happens when you do an early hip snap. You can get up. I have a lot of forward momentum. And here is what it looks like when you do a late timed hip snap. Often you might end up on the back deck. And that can hurt your shoulder trying to do those braces. Some people learn throwing weight back. I'm not actually that good at throwing my weight back kind of roll, but I, I tried to concentrate on that. It looks very similar to my late hip snap, but I did. <laughs> I know that some people can do that role a little bit more effectively. On this one, I'm just concentrating. Everything's the same, but I'm keeping my head up. You're gonna stall out right before coming all the way over your boat. Here's a roll where I'm just showing you a really nice finish. You can see I loosened my fingers, my grip on my fingers right near the end of that roll. And this is an example of how a finish can save a roll. So I did a couple bad rolls here, less punching out. And then I, oh, I remembered I pulled my elbow in and you can save that roll. And here's another example. I think maybe I was keeping my head up or something and 
and kind of like remember, oh yeah, relax and oh yeah, head down, relax. I want to save your roll there. Here's a couple um, bonuses. I have like a little hand roll demo, which I could talk a little bit more. But a lot of the hand roll is if you have a really nice finish, um, it'll play out in having a good hand roll as, as well. And then um, a little bit of a back deck. You want to keep your elbows in on your back deck. If you guys are going for a back deck, you don't keep your elbows tight into your boat as you go over. Um, this is showing a back deck from another angle, keeping your elbows in. And then begin a relax on your finish. Um, this one is a lot of people try back deck with straight arms coming around the back. It's very hard to keep that rotational momentum going when you do that. Um, okay, that's the end of the video there. I have um, just a couple, I'm gonna finish with a couple just practice tips or practice advice um, for everyone. Just as you are thinking about everything I said and, and you know, you'll have access to this video so you'll be able to, to kind of look at it again. Um, but keep in mind, this top one, you want to be very intentional and deliberate. And really, when you're practicing and trying to get rid of bad habits, uh, it's really important that you really focus your attention on exactly what your body is doing and when you go through the motions. And you can first do some bad rules and trying to just recognize it, what you are doing. Um, I recommend, you know, every time you go paddle, make sure you practice a roll. A lot of times you get good enough and you get comfortable and you're starting to run your runs all the time and you never roll. And then all of a sudden you need to and you realize you're not that good at it anymore and then it kind of shakes your confidence so just make sure every time you go out paddle you keep those muscles in shape a lot of times all it has to do with i think is a trophy of some of your rolling muscles and if you just kind of keep it up that'll help a lot um don't overtire yourself a lot of times people try to learn rolling or doing rolling and you go to the pool and you really want to get it or you really want to fix it and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going there's a part where your body just becomes tired and you're just starting to practice bad habits um, once you get tired. So keep it under an hour if you're in the pool working on rolling. And when I'm teaching, I, I don't like to teach anyone more than an hour. I usually find that they start um, just not doing as well. Um, and the first time I teach someone, I usually only do hip snaps the first time just because there's all new muscles and usually you can go home and those muscles build in the next week or the next day that come back and they're a lot better than if I had just pushed through trying to teach the arms next and everything like that. Just remember that if you less done perfectly is way better than quantity of practice. It's kind of going on what I said above. Um, for me, one thing that helped is I tried my offside roll when I lost my roll ones and all of a sudden my offside roll was way better than my onside. And I was able to use my offside to diagnose my onside. Like, what am I doing on my onside that felt really good and off my side. And I tried to apply those things to my onside and that was effective for me. You can change up your boats and you can work on this on the technique in a boat that's easy to roll. And I have a couple comments here. So if the boat has really high sides and you're sitting really deep in it, it's going to be really hard to get your hands out of the, you know, drape your body all the way around, especially if you're a small person and that cockpit's up at your boobs or something or your cockpit's a bit higher, you're not going to actually be able to reach around the boat. I was doing a lot of those demos in a ripper, which has a really small sidewall, and that's one of the reasons why my hands were able to get so far out of the water that they were out of the water. Um, but you know, some people can, you can raise your seat to get higher in your boat if you have high sidewalls. Um, there's an issue a little bit with that in that um, if you're, you are raised up too much, it gets harder to roll at some point because more of your body mass is outside of the rotation of the boat. So if you have more of your body mass outside, that can be a little bit harder um, sometimes to roll. Like I do that with my playboat, my Featherweight, I have a really high seat for aggressive tricks, but I, it is like harder to roll. Um, the bottoms of boats make a difference. So if you look at your boat and it has like kind of a planing or square bottom, that's going to be harder to roll than like one of those boats, like those old school lasers or a popsicle boat or something that's like really rounded and narrow. 
And that's another thing, a narrow boat is gonna be easier to roll than a wide boat. And so when I was first learning to roll, um, I was having, I was trying to roll in this like really square boxy play boat and really struggling. And then as soon as I got in more of an older boat that was rounder and smaller and short, you know, not as high, all of a sudden I could roll. And then I could start thinking about techniques. So some of it is a strength thing. Um, and so think about that as you're working on try to get in a boat that's actually easy to roll as you're troubleshooting and trying to improve. Um, I mentioned this before, you can try a short paddle with small blades um, that can help you have less dependency on, um, you know, those, those big blades or it keeps, it keeps everything just tighter to your boat and you're less likely to hurt your shoulder. So if your shoulder's hurting, try smaller paddles, smaller blades. You can also work in the pool with like a floaty or a kickboard doing these sweeps. Um, they won't let you cheat. So that's kind of nice. Um, they watch a video of yourself too. Um, and maybe you can compare it to some of the videos I have here. Uh, and I, that's like, that's basically what I have um, for a presentation. And I hope it was really instructive and I'm pretty looking forward to hearing all of your questions and helping you guys get more better roles and more confident on the water. So with that, I'll stop sharing. Um, and if there's any questions, Melissa? Awesome. Um, that was great, Natalie. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to start with Paul. Paul had a great question about the relaxed grip. So let me just um, find him and unmute him. All right. And then, um, so just so you guys know the way, those of you that haven't been here yet. Okay. Unmute. You ready there, Paul? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Paul. Okay. Yeah, uh, Natalie, that was great. I, I love your technique of breaking your role to fix your role, uh, doing things wrong to figure out what, what, what's wrong with your role. That, that's a great uh, teaching tool. Oh, thanks. The question I had is um, if you're getting, you know, worked over in a hole or you're in really big water, <laughs> like the Grand Canyon or something, how do you keep your hands loose so you don't lose your paddle? Oh, I didn't think about, I, um, when I'm getting worked in a hole, I often don't grip my top paddle very tightly because I find that I get more prone to injury. Um, you can keep a kind of a, a loose, so you can keep a loose grip and if you start to feel the paddle getting yanked, you can, you can kind of grab it. But I find that if my body is relaxed while I'm getting worked in a hole, my paddle is doesn't get yanked as much. Because when you're gripped, you're, hold, you're tense and things are more likely to, to grab you. So if you can kind of practice being a little bit looser and more relaxed while getting trashed, it's a, kind of a hard, it's actually a skill that is sometimes I try to teach people when I'm up on the slave is I still find a hole and be like, okay, the goal is to try to stay relaxed while we're in this trashy feature. Um, and I think some of it is just that, it, that experience and that like, um, getting familiar with that, but I do find that if you're tenser while getting trashed, it's more likely that paddle is, you're going to get kind of yanked away, your shoulder, your shoulder's going to get hurt, all these things are going to happen, so my biggest piece of advice is anyone getting worked really hard in a hole would be to keep your elbows tight in, keep, keep kind of tuck forward, keep tight, keep, to, keep your elbows in is the main thing. As soon as you have your elbows out or, you know, like this, more likely that paddle is going to get yanked out of your hands and more likely you're going to get hurt in your shoulder. So you're getting worked in a hole, you're tense, try to think about that finished position almost, just, just pull your elbows in and you'll be able to keep a looser, a looser grip than if you're out here and the paddle is just getting yanked and your shoulders are getting yanked. So that's, I guess that's my piece of advice. Find, find a hole to practice in and then you mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. I mean, I have lost a paddle before um, getting worked in a hole, so not, <laughs> I have had that happen. Or it gets yanked out of one hand and I usually have it in the other one. Um, and I'm able at that point to kind of pull it back, but. Uh, I guess the one other piece of advice I'd have is that when you get up, and take a couple of paddle strokes forward 
and lean forward. That's a good way to get uh, some forward momentum after you finish your roll. Take a couple of paddle strokes forward. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when you finish, that, that's what's nice about the finish that I showed. If you finish like this, you're pretty, your torso's rotated already. So you're ready to rotate and take your next forward stroke. Um, so you don't have to actually, you don't have to, I find that you don't have to lean too far. If you come up in a, in a nice paddle position that's slightly forward, it's your, it's your nice paddle position, you finish your roll, you're just ready to go. You can just rotate and take that next really strong paddle stroke driven from that rotational of your core. Yeah. Thanks. That, that's, a good, that's a good thing that I, I didn't talk about a little bit in the finish, but yeah, you're ready to go. Thanks for your question. Uh, is there another question? Uh, am I next? I guess so. Electra, I think that. Hey. <laughs> okay, I guess. Uh, so my question was, um, okay, so you're what? I actually have two questions. One, you're through going through whitewater or rapid, and you're upside down. What do you think about to like? <laughs> center yourself <laughs> um well it depends on the situation like sometimes when I'm, when I'm really confident in my role then i i just like i kind of just in, i kind of just go into this like relaxed mode in my head and i just sort of set up and roll i don't really think about too much but if you're anxious i have had the other experience too where I'm pretty anxious about my rolling. And as soon as you're anxious about your rolling, you're unconfident in it. As soon as you flip over, what's going through your mind sometimes is, oh no, am I gonna mess this up? I need to roll right now. I really need to roll right now. And sometimes if you're anxious, you're, you're, you'll be gripped and it'll be so much harder. So sometimes if I do that, I kind of roll, but then it's like kind of a bad roll and I carp and I fall back over. I'm like, okay. That one, I really need to roll up. I need to relax. And then I'll just try another one, try to be a little more relaxed and focus in. I focus inwards rather than outwards on what's happening outside of my body. If I refocus my attention to just my, my body and what my body is doing, I find that I can usually roll up really quickly at that point. But if my mind is going off in a lot of directions about what's downstream, and getting all gripped, that's when I start carping rolls. And then you kind of get up and you kind of look around and you get more anxious. So upside down, I really like just zone inward. Like just think about your body and yeah, I don't know. The more confident and comfortable you are practicing being upside down and rapids to the more comfortable you'll be able to do in spicy situations. So you can practice on a run that you know, just flipping intentionally in some of the big waves and getting kind of practice for rolling in those scenarios. So. Awesome, really good question, Electra. Um, Next, we have Jenny. Jenny, you are unmuted, so you're on. Hi, Melissa. Great presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, I've got a question about um, what are your tips and tricks for getting a quicker roll? Because a lot of times you really need to get up fast if you're going to play in play features or you're <laughs> in the middle of a gnarly rapid where you've got to get up fast. Um, what are your yeah. thoughts? So one of the fastest rolls is um, a back deck roll where, you know, you kind of like go around. So you can definitely practice that for a really fast roll. Again, that is putting you at exposure to what's under the water. So you don't necessarily want to do that in some situations and you don't necessarily want to get in the habit of always just doing that roll um, without thinking. Um, so some of the the faster rolls happen when you're in rolling strength. I don't know, you've, you've got a really powerful hip snap. You're gonna be able to like roll a lot quicker. Um, I find if you can really focus on having a really flexible and high setup, you're gonna be able to roll a lot faster. 
um, you just not your sweep is not meeting any resistance of the water at that point so it's just a lot faster um, Honestly, a lot of it comes down to rolling a lot. So if you're playboarding a lot, you're gonna get faster as you roll more and as your brain doesn't have to think about it and as you get better rolls, the less your brain has to like try to process what you're doing while you're rolling, the faster your roll is gonna be. So it's as, as long as it's more intuitive. Um, you just wanna make sure as you're getting to that point, you're actually practicing good habits so that your brain is intuitively doing good things rather than not so good things. <laughs> Um, the other thing you can practice, which I kind of regret, I didn't show in this video and I thought of it afterwards is in a pool, you can practice not doing a setup. So you can practice being upside down in really weird positions under your boat and just doing a roll with driving from your knee and relaxing into a finish at the end. And you can do, you can roll up in some amazingly bad setup configurations without even like a sweep. So like it's a hip snap and a finish almost, or you kind of purchase under your water. So you can start playing. I would do that in a place that you feel very comfortable and safe, but um, play around with um, not getting set up. That's gonna make your roll a lot faster if you don't spending all the time to be worried about your setup. And that's what I find in, in whitewater. A lot of times people try to make the transition from pool to whitewater. In the pool, they're feeling a setup to be a certain thing. There's no whitewater buffeting you around. And, and um, you get on the river, and all of a sudden, you don't feel this air on your knuckles. Things are splashing. You don't know if your hands are out of the water. And the, the best advice I have to say is if you stop worrying about where your hands are at and where your paddle is at and worried if it's out on the surface, and you just focus on making sure your core is, your body is moving correctly throughout the roll and you have that good hip snap and finish, it's, you're, and your paddle's close to your boat, you're not like trying to reach like this, that's gonna hurt your shoulder if you ever have a straight front arm, you know, to purchase the top of the water. A lot of times when people will try to reach for the top of the water like this with a straight arm, and that's actually does the opposite, bring your arm in, yeah. and do yeah, a nice yeah. roll like that, and um, <clears throat> that can help a lot in, whitewater trying to make that transition to pool and whitewater like just focusing on those the core mechanics rather than your arms and where your arms are at okay good good food yeah. for thought thank you yeah hello oh, heather can you hear me I can all right hear thomas you're up oh hey there thank you yeah so i um you know, my question is kind of whenever I finish, I always end up leaning back on the stern, you know, and I, I've always thought, you know, if you're, if your hips are up and you're, uh, the top half of your body is closer to the water, you'll have an easier time, uh, you know, rolling up, but, uh, it seems like that's probably not the case. So I guess my question to you is, is there, um, is there a tip you have for that to prevent that body position in that, in that, uh, final, in that finish position? Yeah, my guess is if you if you go back to that video and you watch the one where I'm leading with my hand, mm -hmm. sometimes if you're leading a lot with your hand, your sweep, your body position is actually kind of like going past 90 degrees with your boat. Um, as you're hip snapping, or if you have a late hip snap, your body position will end up back. So the idea is to be able to tuck and your body gets to about 90 degrees, but then it doesn't it, it doesn't rock any further back at that point. You're doing your hip snap and really focusing on your hip snap just being a side to side motion rather than your hip snap being a, a like, um, you know, like a, a, a diagonal motion this way. So sometimes people will sweep like that rather than sweeping like this and then doing the hip snap and just falling and relaxing to that position. So really as you're practicing, you're just focusing on making sure you're as you untuck yourself that you never untuck past about 90 degrees um before your hip snap or even after your hip snap so i guess that's does that help yeah no i i you know exactly what you just talked about i kind of you know i feel myself doing that um so yeah I, I definitely agree with that i i didn't realize that i was doing a hip snap late but you know what you're describing is essentially what happens to me um, mm -hmm. So yeah, no, that, that totally uh, makes sense. 
Yeah, and a lot of times if you learn with a C to C, so I, I kind of feel like the C to C and the sweep are, are really actually similar roles. It's just kind of like how you learn. But often if you're doing a C to C role and you're, it's, it, it teaches the untuck and then you're kind of hanging out here in this like 90 degree position. And it's really hard to hold that position without sinking. And a lot of times people will go to 90 degrees and then they'll initiate their sweep and they just want to keep their body moving. So you end up um, developing a role where you're kind of um, a little bit late, honestly. Uh, I, I try to tell people to start, try to start your hip snap about, I don't know, when your paddle is like 45 towards 90, like, you know, your sweep is 45 degrees maybe. Um, because by the time it registers between your hand and it translates throughout the whole body and then you're, you're actually hip snapping as you, you usually get to about 90 degrees by then. And, um, and that's what's happening when postpartum, when I was weaker, I, I was sweeping, but my hip snap was way less powerful. And so I was doing it at my normal time, but my, my boat was just rolling too slowly and so my body just had nowhere to go but keep going and I was always ending up in the back deck a little bit so um. okay. perfect yeah no I, I did learn with the C to C first so I I think that probably went over to doing the hip snap when the paddle was at 90 so that that makes sense thank you yeah Johnson, you are up Honey. Hi. Feed Shiva. Oh. Six forty-five. Emma, you are all ready to go. And then if you're not asking a question right now, would you mind just muting yourselves? Thank you very much. Um yeah, sorry, Natalie, did you hear the question? No, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> okay. So I've noticed that when my roll fails, I tend to push really hard with my foot on the same side that I'm rolling up with. And I'm wondering if Once you again. know what the core problem is there. So instead of pulling with my knee, I'm like pushing with my foot. As part of your hip snap? Yeah. You know, this is the first for me. <laughs> um, I, I would say go back to the pool and really work on a lot of hip snap exercises where you don't have your paddle or anything. So you're not getting distracted by your sweep or your paddle and really pull your attention to what your lower body is doing and, um, and the, a, fin a, like a loose finish. And just make sure that the only time you have tension in your leg is right at the beginning of the, pull the hip snap when you're pulling up on that thigh brace. And then you might just have to, it might just take some focused attention for you to like work on that specifically um, to be able to overcome a, a habit that you have. You don't, probably don't even think about it now. It's probably just something that like happens. Um, but if you can work on pulling up and having that tension and then relaxing um, your leg, uh, yeah. it's, it's, you don't like the role, the only time that you have that you know, your, your leg should really be gripped is right at that beginning. You might also look at your head position because a lot of time your head position translates to how your knees are pulling or not on your thigh braces. So as you can, you can go to the pool and kind of play around with um, putting your boat on edge and playing around with your head, seeing it, how it translates to your knees without you actively doing anything with your knees or your legs. Mm -hmm. um, but so I guess that's the advice I have. I, I, now I'm curious, I might have to go and like, which, which foot was it? The, the one that's pulling up yeah. or the other one? So if I um, I'm rolling on my right side, it's my right leg that I'm pushing, pushing with. Hmm. I'll play around that, that the next time I go, cause that's an interesting one. <laughs> what other question I've always rolled with my eyes closed. Me and <laughs> I started trying with my eyes open, and it seems to help. Does anyone, do you have any experience with that? 
Yeah, I, it can help. It can help. I did some goggles stuff when I was troubleshooting rules. I feel like it can really help as you're troubleshooting. I do feel like you can get in the trap of focus, starting to focus too much on like what your paddle and your hand is doing and worried about that rather than just focusing on like, you know, stretching more and doing everything with your body. Um, so just be aware of that, but it can be something you can check on. As you do your sweep, your fingers should be loose on your paddle. Just check to make sure you have a loose grip throughout your sweep stroke. Um, that, I mean, yeah, I mean, some people like it, some people don't. I think it's helpful when you're troubleshooting rolls. Yeah. Awesome. Super good question. Thank you, Emma. Okay, so Rachel, you are next. Where are you? Um, and just for the record, I always roll with my eyes closed when I was a very new kayaker, potentially on a whole bunch of things I shouldn't have been on. Um, I offhandedly remarked one day at the end of a run, and I said, well, I'm like, man, I'm like, I just get really distracted by all the rocks and things going by my face. And one of the guys <laughs> just looked at me and went, don't look at that. Just keep your eyes closed. You can look around when you're done. And so, yes, I'm all about keeping the eyes closed. All right, Rachel. I, I am. Um, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Natalie. Awesome presentation. Um, so I had a Blaze Perception and upgraded, I think, to a Nano Piranha. I haven't even, I was able to do a pool roll in the um, Blaze, but I'm picking up my skirt this weekend for the Nano Piranha. So I haven't even done a single roll in it. But just going over what you're saying, it's a super high boat. So um, just what you're saying of like, it's going to be a challenge to get the hands it's hard to talk about this without actually yeah. doing motions. Um, but any, so I'm guessing it's going to be hard to get the hands out of the water because it sits so high or? Well, it, it, remember, it's not like a be all end all if your hands are on the, out of the water. It's more important that your hands are even. Mm, okay. So when you're setting up, don't reach for, just don't try to reach for the surface with your arms. Okay. Just reach as much as your body allows around the side of your boat with your arm, your elbows bent and your arms draping over, or at that point it'll be going against gravity, right? Towards the surface. But keep your elbows bent as you do that. And you'll get more distance out of the water by curving your body around your boat than you will reaching your hands around. Okay. So that's just a really important thing. As your boats get wider or bigger, it's that that comment about how much are you reaching that sea position, how much are you really stretching that side and trying to reach around the boat with your body matters more. Okay. To, to be able to have a higher setup, but high setup isn't a be all or end all either. Like I said, you remember there's the, all the components of the roll and you don't have to have a, you know, really high setup to have a, a good, a good roll if uh, other parts of the mechanics are correct. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So good luck in your new boat. I think you'll yeah, have fun. Forward to it. But the perception is an easy, easier boat. To oh, earn. dang it. We'll be, it'll be harder to roll than your other one, but. Okay. You should be fine. All right. Thanks so much, Rachel. All right, Electra, you are unmuted and ready to roll. Cool. Yeah, so my second question was, um, or is, uh, okay, you roll up, you're mid-rapid. Uh, then what? So like I'll roll up mid rapid and then be like backwards and then I like have, how do you stay on line and like, or do you just figure it out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really encourage you to develop a little bit, uh, a lot of awareness when you're paddling so that you kind of already know what's downstream before you flipped. So if you kind of already kind of know, have this, sense of where you are within the rapid as a whole and then you flip but you 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 know where you are not just like a laser vision you, you kind of know the you kind of can see the rapid ahead of you you kind of know all the features um you roll up and the more you've done that ahead of time the more quickly you're going to be able to gauge where you're at and be able to get back to where a good place to be is but you're right, if, if you're backwards, it's, it's uh, having a good sweep stroke and getting forward, um, but knowing which side of the river you might wanna be going to 
is helpful ahead of time because then you know which sweep to take so you're not like doing a whole 360 while you're trying to figure out where you're at um i had a so, oh so one thing that can help you build this awareness and i encourage there to be more of these but if you if there's any races or practice racing or even just practice racing your friends down a run um, you'll find that as soon as you start trying to go fast, you start running into a lot of rocks and things because it, it sort of forces you to make your decisions earlier and to look further ahead at where you want to go because you're scoping out the fastest lines because you're trying to beat all your friends. So um, that can help you gain a little bit more ability to uh, pick out lines much further than immediately in front of you, which will help you in your recovery after you roll. No. Stay Sweet. relaxed. Try to stay relaxed too. Like, try not to like. If the more gripped you are, like, oh my gosh, where am I? You <laughs> roll up. The more likely you're gonna flip over, and then you're gonna get more. Like, if if you can come up to on a relaxed finish, you're already gonna be relaxed, and you're gonna be able to recover a lot quicker, too. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Electra. Good question. Um, John, you should be unmuted and ready to roll. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks for the presentation. I just had a question about a weak side roll. Uh -huh. I, I have one in practice, barely. It's a lot weaker. But yep. in combat situations, it's never even been a choice. I just instinctively go to the strong side. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you develop this versatility to go to the whatever side is better? Ooh, um, I think I've developed it a lot of times just by play boating. Um, and just wanting to get up quicker. Um, so a lot of practice, but one thing that you'll need to do, cause you have muscle memory to go to a certain side and mm -hmm. your, your brain's going to trigger that. You're going to have to kind of retrain your brain that you can go to either side. So you might just need to do some specific practice at a spot. You find a good spot with a wave train and eddy or hole. And then, um, you can try, um, flipping different ways and making conscious effort. Okay, now I'm going to set up on, see if you can think about it and set up on the side that you said you're going to set up on. That's really interesting because a lot of times you'll flip, you're like, I'm going to set up on my offside. Then you don't. And you're like, okay, well that, yeah. <laughs> so you might have to just, it just might take some really concentrated, um, focused attention. And um, if you can do that in a spot that where you don't have to worry about anything else, then you're going to have more success in, in, in doing that. Yeah. Got you. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Thanks. Good question. All right. Um, Savannah, you are unmuted and ready to go. Hi, Natalie. Hi. Thanks for doing this. Um, my question is, what dry land exercises do you recommend? to keep your hip snap sharp when you can't get to the river or the pool? Um, well, you can always, um, so the easy one is like you think of oblique, you know, you have obliques here and that's a big rolling muscle is your, your oblique abs. Um, so anything you can do to train your obliques, whether it's like the ab exercises that focus on these oblique um, abs. I think you could probably look up like oblique ab exercises with, you know, there's balls, there's side crunches probably. Um, but it's not just, this is what I learned being pregnant and having kids. It's, it's really not just your obliques <laughs> that do a lot of work with this. Um, there's these really small muscles right in your um, um, pelvic region, right on your inner thighs. Your inner thighs really work really hard. So um, I had to do some PT postpartum and some of it was um we use sliders um you know those those are like a paper plate and you can kind of focus on having some friction or tension and sliding them out and back in pull you know like kind of stepping your leg out and stepping your leg back in with friction mm -hmm. that engages some of those muscles so um that can help um flexibility so anything to do with uh, twisting, flexibility exercises, or this sort of rotational this way. So rotation this way, um, twisting, 
Um, you can always strengthen shoulders. Um, if you have a good roll, it shouldn't put any strain on your shoulder if you keep your elbows in, but it's not a bad idea to work on, you know, you can do the classic rotator, all the rotator cuff um, exercises on your shoulder. That'll keep you in just general good paddling shape. Um, so yeah, I think, I think those ones give you a good start. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Brad, thank you so much. Um, who do we have next? I just unmuted Camilla. Camilla. Yeah. Hi there. Thanks for your presentation. Um, I do a C to C roll, and I was just wondering if you could clarify more about what you were talking about with timing with the hip snap for that, because I feel like at least some of the time I'm either picking my head up, but then some of the time it's that my hip snap, I guess, isn't really timed right, but I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. So. It can be tricky because so when you when you do the C to C, you really have to focus a, a bit harder on um, being completely relaxed in your finish. Mm -hmm. Because you, if you're to the side like this and you go to your C position, that's exactly where you want to hip snap from. But you can't let your abs loose and lean any further back than that as you hip snap. Because as soon as you do that, it's going to be hard to keep your head down. You're going to be back. So you really, uh, you can sweep and stop uh, here on the sweep. But as soon as you start that hip snap, the motion is no longer any further back. It's completely just dropping and relaxing. As soon as you start that hip snap, your body activates and then it, re it completely relaxes and you work on your finish. If you, if you're kind of, Really, as soon, some people will do a hip snap, and as they do a hip snap, they kind of like um, their ab tension goes mm -hmm. they go back a little bit as they do their hip snap. So you can go back to your hip snap exercises and make sure that as you're hip snapping, you also don't have body movement, any body movement backwards. Okay. So that it's just a side to side motion, and that should help a lot. I think if you go back and watch that hip snap video again, and I can maybe um, have the links, uh, they're up on YouTube, but I think you guys should be able to watch this video again and um, just focus really hard on that hip snap. I find that if you have a C to C roll, you really need to have a really correct hip snap um, side to side. There's, there's less, yeah, because you're already kind of waiting there. <laughs> And your paddle's sinking <laughs> as you're waiting in that spot. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much, Camilla. Good question. And um, so the, I did a uh, last call on questions and didn't seem like we had any. So it looks like someone, someone asked a question about their calf cramping up or kind of made a statement. It's a statement. I don't know if it's a question, if they wanted me to comment on it or not. Stretch your calf. Uh, try to be less gripped. Relax a little more. Add a little magnesium to your diet. Yeah, maybe they're pushing on your. They're pushing too on the feet. That's one that I have to have to think about the next time I go to the pool. Is that foot pushing error? You can. It's my. I'm not. I think Rachel, you're on. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you haven't, I haven't just because I'm having technical difficulties today. If you haven't been, if you have, if you've talked and haven't muted yourself, please just mute yourself. So, I mean, as much as we would all love to hear what you're having for dinner tonight. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, Natalie, do you have any closing rem remarks you'd like? To oh, I just say? thank everyone for coming into the webinar and, uh, Hearing what I had to say, and hopefully it was helpful for you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and thank you everyone for attending. This has been really awesome, and Natalie, such great tips. Um, I learned somebody asked a question the other day on my kayaking progression and how I how I stepped up, and um, <laughs> I had a little interesting. I learned to roll after I learned how to boob. 
which was, I don't recommend for anyone, but um, <laughs> if only I had had these webinars and these great coaches when I was learning to kayak. But um, thank you all for coming. And um, just so you guys know, the proceeds from today go to the Columbia Gorge Junior Kayak Club. And I'm gonna put a screen up at the end of this webinar and it does have Natalie's details on. So if you all just wanna hang out for a second and it also gives you a, um, an opportunity if you wanna give an extra gratuity or if you wanna donate a little bit more to the Kayak Club, that would be fantastic. And there's all that information up there. You will receive an email, those of you that have done this before and there's heaps of regulars and I'm really stoked to that you're all back. Um, you will get a, a link to access this. If somebody was here and um, you had a friend that couldn't make it, we will, um, all of our archives are available on our e-store. That being said, if there was something that you wanted to attend and you couldn't make it, go ahead and get on our shop page. They're five bucks um, and you can watch them all <laughs> at your leisure. But um, anyways, thank you so much. Um, we are all getting very excited to get back on the water and start teaching again. Um, some states were going, some states were not. Um, some states I teach in, we can start teaching. And of course, Northern California, we are still waiting. <laughs> but um, get out there, have fun, be safe, practice your role. I have my junior ambassadors. They have been on this train where they're doing 10 plus roles a day every day. And they're on day five. And they've gotten their parents on it. And they have onside, offside, back deck, hand rolls, onside and offside, and they're just going to be unstoppable. So yeah, the more you practice it, the more comfortable you're going to be. And thank you so much, Natalie. I can't wait to, I was so hoping that we, we should have been paddling together this week. <laughs> but next time, next time. Well, so I put we will see you sometimes. Yeah, and I put the links to the videos in the uh, group chat if anyone wants to quickly grab those links before the, the call ends. Um, if someone wants to know if I send them videos or troubleshoot, you can send me an email with your video and I'll, I'll try to quickly fire you off what I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I did think about the awesome. foot thing more. Just work on having your hip snap with more relaxed at the end. And I think the foot thing will resolve. Yeah. Right on. Um, all right. Well, cool. Thanks so much, everyone. And hopefully we see you all again very, very soon. All right. Take care, kids. Be safe out there. Okay. Uh, leave meeting. Okay.